Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Tension to UK. How you guys doing? All good? I wish I could be glad. <laughs> um, today is a very mournful day for me. The most wonderful and magnificent teacher and mentor in my life passed away today. His name was Don French, and he was my graphic design teacher. And he was a very wonderful man. Very kind and loving. And it made you feel very special about yourself. And he believed in you, you know. He believed in you when others did not. And just, he was a very wonderful man. You know, in my life, I've lost a lot of people. I'm sure some of you guys have too. I'm a lot of you guys. And the first thing I've always felt when somebody passed away is this sting of regret and and guilt that somehow their soul is on my back, like it's my responsibility. But it simply isn't true, you know. God's sheep will hear his voice. And the, and the thing is, I truly believe that when we all die, that a lot more people will be in heaven than we might think. I think in the Christian circle, we often so focused on hell and avoiding this place. But then it's true that God loves us more than we could love each other. That he wouldn't, he wouldn't want anyone to be lost. And there are moments, these secret moments in life that we will never know of. I don't know Don French's last moments. He wasn't, he wasn't a Christian. He wasn't saved. But you don't know the last moments in life and how simply you can be saved. I feel like as Christians, we overcomplicate things. We overcomplicate how to get saved. But I think the Bible was written more for rewards. I mean, I really am treading carefully here because I don't want to fall into any sort of heresy and or any kind of, you know, thing like this. I, I know how the world is slowly turning into. I'm not condoning sin or anything like this. But just the very nature of God is love. And He's a very righteous God, of course. And He will judge sin righteously. But I think we underestimate His love. And it isn't this fact that He will He will just rescue you know, somebody without faith. But what I'm getting at is that at the very last moment, the last breath, there could be that moment of clarity, a little flashback kind of shows you who you are and you repent and you get saved instantly at the last moment. I was all day today when I heard um, his death, I fell into this long morning and my heart was just aching. And I was regretting like I re regretted in the military. I, I've lost several people, several mentors and friends in the military, and it, was, it hurt, you know. And at the time, I was very legalistic, very legalistic. Like, it had to be this, 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 and this, and this, or you weren't saved. If you didn't do this, then you're not saved. Like, very Pharisee-like, because I felt like I knew so much about the Bible. I read it every day. I was a hypocrite. You know, very legalistic, very teacher-minded. But while I was living like that, everybody who died felt like it was my fault and that burden was on me. 
and that that person could have been saved if, if I said something, if I did something. And I placed it all on my shoulders. But that wasn't right. God uses us to evangelize, don't get me wrong. We're messengers too. We spread His good news. And we ought to, we ought to spread the gospel. You know, so I used to feel regret, like it was my fault and stuff. And so naturally that same feeling came up. The same feeling. It's condemning me, condemning my mind, telling me, you see, you see how much of a coward you are. What kind of Christian are you? You should give up. <laughs> you should stop preaching. Like these kind of whispers. But unlike before, you know, God has shown me throughout the years, that's not the case. And then he started to kind of reveal, you know, his love and that all things are possible in God. That in us, you know, we can't do anything. As human beings, we're so flawed. But in God, all things are possible. And I, I kind of questioned that, like, what is all things? Is anything too hard for God? I mean, there there comes a point where I'm just like, but I feel like he can't do that. I mean, that, that'd be going against his words, though. Like, there's there's certain things I, I still kind of, you know, struggle with when it says all things. But I don't know. I feel like when he means all things, he means all things. But yeah, anyways, I, I prayed to the Lord and, you know, I prayed much as I can for him. And at the last moment, I started to realize, like, you know what? In his last moments, he could have been saved. Who knows? And I just kind of passed my day, and I had peace, and I led everything up to God. And I was like, you know. And I learned a lot about death again. It reminded me a lot about death. That everything that we build up in this life just will disappear. You know, all our worries, all our struggles in this life it's, it's gonna be gone i realize yeah I'm, I'm mourning for don french but my time will come too everyone's time will come like he's a little bit sooner than me like, so what my time will come and i remember this verse in the bible that i, I heard yesterday he who is who you love silver shall not be satisfied with silver Meaning, like, if you love riches, you won't be satisfied with riches. If you love fast things like motorcycles, you'll always want something faster. Never be satisfied with speed. You always got to go a little faster. If you love women, you'll never be satisfied with women. You'll always want someone hotter than that. And then the same thing with everything in life, you know. You just want more and more and more. Because it never satisfies you. It never satisfies. Things in this earth is vanity. It never satisfies. We look up to celebrities. You know? <laughs> I was at Vons. I was at Vons today just about to get some something to drink, you know, and <laughs> I saw this magazine. Jennifer Aniston, you know, heartbroken again, someone cheated on her again. <laughs> and, and all I could think about is like, man, what a horrible life. <laughs> what a horrible life to be that beautiful and be a celebrity and have all that money but you never have any privacy people always breaking your heart <laughs> never a good relationship meanwhile other people live humbly but they have loved ones who never break up, on, break up with them they'll fight through it they'll never cheat on them and just have this love I just, uh, I just thought that was such a pity that there's so many people out there, not just Jennifer Aniston, but just you know, all these rich people that we look up to, wanting to be that, hoping to be that, thriving for that, striving for that. And then it kind of flashed back to the death, and it's like, man, we don't take any of this. We don't take any of this after we die. How important is our soul? And just, 
and I went home, got in my little bed, and just cuddled up in my little blankets. And as I was like falling asleep, because you know how when you cry, you start falling asleep. And as I was falling asleep, I kind of turned on this video that was in my recommended box, and I just watched it. And it happened to be one of those, you know, vision ones again. I guess because I watched it before, there was another one. <laughs> so I watched one. And it was this atheist man who was a surfer. And he was kind of all into that, like, party lifestyle. He didn't know about God. He had a Christian mother, though. And um, he loved to travel with his, with his surfboard. And he was out there. And he was surfing. And he got hit by uh, jellyfish box jellyfish I, you don't know about that like box jellyfish if you get stung by one of those you don't live uh, you you pretty much you pretty much dead but he got hit by five of them on his arm and he was his arm was just going dead and somehow somehow he made it out to the coast and somehow he made it to the hospital and while he was in the hospital bed what he said really touched me because this is, this is the concern that I had so at that last moment, at his last moment, he remembered something that his mom told him, which was like, what was that? I, sh I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, and he remembered that. And then he said he, his life flashed before his eyes. And he saw all in his life how vanity it was, how vain it was. And just long story short, he, he in his heart, he repented and he accepted Jesus. The last moment. And that's when he started having these visions. So, for the sake of time, he went to hell. He went to heaven. And he saw heaven, how beautiful it was. And he just... He couldn't even face Christ. He couldn't face Jesus in his, his light. He was just like, but God, I'm such a sinner. I'm such a, I can't, you know. But then every time he would confess who he was, Jesus would project his love that much more. Just, and that, and this man's, like, face when he was explaining that just made me, like, cringe. Because he really felt at that time, like, he really knew the sins that he committed before God. But anyways, like, um, apparently his mom was praying for him. And he came back from the dead. <laughs> he was in the mor morgue. He was actually on the morgue. And then he, he said some Indian doctor was hitting his legs with a scalpel <laughs> to see if he was dead. And then, like, he woke up. And then they were like, oh, my God. You know, and they shocked and... And he came back because apparently Jesus showed them a vision of his mother. And he realized that if his if he just stayed in eternity, then would his mother even know that because of her prayer that his son actually got saved and was in heaven? Or but then if he just stayed in heaven, then perhaps his mother would have always thought that his son was in hell. And he was like, how selfish would that have been? And he couldn't stand it, so he said he came back. And when he came back, Christ said to spread his word, spread his love. And I was seeing this half sleepy. And I didn't understand it at first. I'm like, what did I see? What is, man, is another one of those John Bunyan things? Like, what did I see? But then I realized it was God showing me what I was worrying about today. All day. All my mourning today. All my pains today. It's just... I'm not saying I'm not... I'm not sad anymore for his death, but... This, this other hope came in my heart. That God loves him more than I could possibly love him. Or his family. And it is not my place to judge whether who went to heaven, who went to hell. You don't know that. You don't, nobody knows that. It's him and the Lord at the last moment. 
And then I had, you know, I had hope. I had faith again. And just, I don't know, I'm at peace. And I felt like I wanted to share this because I know there were a few people out there in this world that lost people this year or last year. I, I, I remember reading a lot of comments, you know, like someone lost her, her father. Some people lost their uncle. Some people lost their sister, friends, relatives. And God, I know how painful that is. But just I have hope that God will will rescue more people than we we give him credit for. You know, we're always worried that like somebody might have went to hell. But I think God, He knows what He's doing. You know. He sent himself to die for us. He will rescue us. Even the ones that look like they won't be able to. In the end, God is the judge. And there was somebody who wrote in my comments section below that we ought not to be talking about hell as a center point. Amen. You're right. I feel like as Christians, we focus so much on hellfire and brimstone and don't get me wrong pastors back then preachers back then they they used hell and brimstone to get people's attention but i think that is established well enough in our life this this hell notion i think we all know <laughs> but i think right now we need we ought to be sharing god's love Jesus' is love rather than hell. I mean, who knows? Maybe a few months from now, years from now, that that might change and I might feel like, oh, I have to be back about hell and I gotta fuck. But in my heart, that's what it's that's what it's telling me. That it had to be more about love. To showcase his love rather than hell. And so, amen, brothers. Um, sorry for downing on you guys, but it's just part of my life. I want to share this with you guys. Uh, and I hope everything's all well with you guys. Bye.